For the longest time, I've wanted push and hold functionality for the Stream Deck. Imagine having a button that mutes your mic, but only when your finger is held down on the button. Or maybe you added a filter to your camera in OBS and you push down on a button, turns on that filter, let's go, filter turns off. Well, the title of the video is clickbait. However, thanks to the StreamerBot community, there's now a plugin for the Stream Deck that not only adds push and hold functionality, but you can do things like show your bitrate on your stream deck in a chart so you can see it go up and down. You can show your latest subscriber on a button. You can even add a blur filter to your camera. And if you've got one of those knobby boy stream decks, you can increase the blur intensity using one of the knobs. This plugin basically allows you to do anything you want straight from your stream deck. And I know that sounds like an unbelievable claim, but just keep watching and you'll see exactly what I mean. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes, not just for film and video. They've even got a lot of career focused classes now. Listen, running a YouTube channel is a lot of work. I'm working on like six videos at the moment and it's a lot to track, especially because I edit my own videos. And so I've been working really hard to optimize my workflow lately. And so to do that, I've been using a program called Notion, which I found out about through a class on Skillshare by Ali Abdal, which is a Notion masterclass. Ali runs a massive YouTube channel, and so he shows you how he uses Notion to plan his videos out, write the scripts, track the progress of every video. In fact, I'm literally reading off of a script that I wrote inside Notion. Here, you can see all the videos I have in progress. Look, I got like five videos that I have to edit. Here's the video that I am filming right now, and then I got more videos that I'm scripting. So useful. I have no idea about any of this. So if you'd like to optimize your workflow, you can take Ali's Notion Masterclass or any of the hundreds of classes on Skillshare. The link will be down below. And the first 1000 of you that click on that link will get a free one month trial of their premium membership. Stop making fun of the way I say button, okay? It's my speech pattern, I can't fix it. So before I show you the plugin, the first thing you need to do is install StreamerBot. And if you don't know what StreamerBot is or you know what it is, but you just don't wanna use it, I don't know what I have to do to convince you because I've done so many videos showing you all the coolest things you can do with StreamerBot, but like, it's cool, okay? So if you don't know, go and watch this video, it shows you how to set all of that up. And then you can go and install the StreamerBot plugin for Stream Deck. Now at the moment, it's not gonna appear in the plugin store for your Stream Deck, so you're gonna have to go into the link in the description and manually install the plugin there. Quick update, I totally just lied to you right now. It's, uh, it's up there. So go download it. If you did it correctly, you should see three actions on the side that say action, action switch, and status indicator. And before you go crazy and start adding a million buttons to your stream deck, there's a couple things that you need to do for the first time that you use this plugin. Number one, open up StreamerBot, go to the integrations tab, stream deck tab, and click start server. And also check the box that says auto start. You need to do this so your stream deck and StreamerBot can communicate back and forth with each other. Then drag an action command onto a blank button on your stream deck. And before you do anything here, click on the instance dropdown and go to configure instance instances and just click on save to create a new instance. If you did it correctly, it should say online in green text next to the instance. If it doesn't, that's your fault and I don't know how to fix it. So let's start with actions. So this is the most basic button that you can set up with this plugin. So you can essentially just run any action that you've set up in StreamerBot, but from a button on your Stream Deck. So let's say for instance, you've created an action inside of StreamerBot that turns on an OBS filter for your camera. And if you wanna run that action, you would just go to the interaction dropdown and select key down, set the action to whatever you named it inside of StreamerBot, press the key in your Stream Deck and boom, the filter just turns on. But here's the kicker. If you make an action that does the opposite thing, so it turns off that filter, then you can select key up in the interaction dropdown. You can set another action for what happens when you release the key. So now that filter will only be enabled so long as you have your finger pressed on the key. It also supports long presses. So if you have something that you don't want to accidentally activate, like I don't know, something like a mute button. You don't want to accidentally fat finger and hit it and then you're, no one can hear you anymore. You can set it up so that your mute button will only activate when your finger is held down on the button for a, for a couple seconds. But it doesn't stop there because the communication between your stream deck and streamer bot, it's a two-way communication. And what, do you, what I mean by that? 
Well, that means that StreamerBot can also do things like change the background of a Stream Deck button, or it could change the title, like the label that you actually see there. One neat thing that I did is I have a button on my Stream Deck that shows my latest Twitch sub. So StreamerBot can detect every time you get a new sub and it can tell the Stream Deck to change the label to the name of the person that just subbed. And it can also grab their profile picture and make that the background of the button. And then to add to that, I added a key down interaction so that when I press down on the key, it automatically shouts out the person whose name is on that key. Another key that I have is a button that shows the box art for the current category that I'm on. So whenever I change to a different game on my Twitch dashboard, it shows the box art of whatever I'm streaming to. So I can just glance down and be like, oh yeah, I'm in the hot dubs category. So if you want to change what's displayed on the Stream Deck button itself, you have two ways of doing that. You could just change the appearance inside of the Stream Deck software like you would do on any Stream Deck button, or you could add a new action in StreamerBot. And if you right click under sub actions, there's a section that says Stream Deck with a whole bunch of options you can do, like changing the title, which is the label on the button, or changing the background of the key. We'll do one that changes the label of the button. So we're gonna add a set title sub action, and then it's gonna ask you for an ID. So if you go to the button that you created on your Stream Deck, it's gonna show you a long string next to the ID field. That ID is so that StreamerBot knows which button to change. So just copy that long string and then paste that into the box you see in StreamerBot. Set the title to whatever you want and whenever that action gets triggered, it will change what appears on the Stream Deck button. But you can put whatever variable you want here. If you don't know what variables are, you can watch last week's video about it. But we can put in a variable like user and set this action to activate every time we get a new sub. And so when that happens, it's going to set the button to the name of whoever subbed to you. If you want to add the profile picture of the person that subbed to, you can do that pretty easily. You just add a get user info for target and make sure to select user. And then you would add a stream deck set background. And for the image, you just put target user profile image URL and then the button ID from the Stream Deck, and that will add the profile picture every time someone subs. They also have action switches, which are more or less the same thing as the action command. It's just that it has an on and off state. So you can run something every time you flip the switch on and then run a different thing whenever you flip the switch off. For me, I have a panic switch. So every time I get hate rated, which thankfully hasn't happened in a while, I don't know where they all went. Someone hate rate me, bitches. I only use my switch. But when I turn on my panic switch, it doesn't just turn on the shield mode on Twitch, but it also runs this cool animation, does some sound effects, text-to-speech, turns the lights behind me white. And then when I flip the switches off, it does another animation and then flips the colors behind me back to their original colors. And so with an action switch, I can have one button that does both of those different animations. Now, you could just use the multi-action switch that's already built into a Stream Deck, but the advantage of having the streamer bot action switch is that you can change the state of the button from StreamerBot. With the built-in multi-action switch, my mods have no way of interacting with my Stream Deck at all. But with the action switch of this plugin, uh, they can do that. So that's pretty neat. The next thing is the status indicator command. So this is really cool. You can use this to show different statistics on your Stream Deck. Maybe show your view count, your bit rate in OBS, maybe keep track of a death counter. And there's even an option to show a graph on the button. So to give you an example, we're gonna drag a status indicator onto a blank button. Then in StreamerBot, we'll make a new action. And what we want is we want this action to update our view count and put that on our Stream Deck. So I'm gonna add a sub action, this will just get our view count so that we could do something with it. Then I'll add a set value sub action and we're gonna set the value to percent viewer count percent. I'm also gonna copy in the ID of our Stream Deck button so StreamerBot knows which button to update. And then we're just gonna set this action to run on a two minute timer. What this is gonna do is every two minutes, not only is it going to update the view count on the button, but it's also gonna show it in a chart. So I'll be able to see my view count rise every time I do just chatting. And then every time I wanna enjoy myself and play a game, I can see my view count go down. 
Now, obviously that's not the most exciting example. You could already show your view count on your stream deck without doing all this programming crap. But again, that's just an example. You can show anything you want. I have a button that shows my bitrate in OBS and the button is green, but if the bitrate falls below a certain threshold, the button will turn red. And so that way I can see at a glance if I'm dropping any frames. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. So if you got one of those stream decks that have the knobs, the, the knobby boy stream decks, you can program the dials too. You can drag an action dial, which it's pretty straightforward. You can program something to happen when you turn the dial up, turn it down, click into the knob, touch on the touch screen or hold the touch screen down. But control dials, this is where it gets interesting. So uh, let me give you an example. So you know how when you run ad breaks on your stream, let's just say you wanna run an ad break for 30 seconds. Well, that's pretty straightforward. You just drag a button on your stream deck to play an ad, and then you set the duration to 30 seconds. But what if I wanna run a 90 second ad or 180 second ad? I gotta make an individual button for each duration? That sucks, I don't wanna do that. So instead, I made an ad dial, and when I turn the dial, it selects a duration between 30 and 180 seconds. And then if I wanna run an ad for that amount of time, just click into the dial and it runs an ad for that duration. So you can change the minimum number and maximum number for a dial and then change the stepping for the dial. So this one only steps up in increments of 30 and then you can program it so that when you click into it, it sends that number to StreamerBot and then you can make an action in StreamerBot that handles that number and does whatever you want with it. It's 7.30 in the morning and I don't feel like explaining how any of this works, so just copy the code that I wrote here. And then once you're done with that, go back to your stream deck, set the interaction for the dial to dial press, and set the action to whatever you made it in StreamerBot. And you can use this concept for anything. Another example is I have a blur filter on my camera, and when I click into the dial, it just turns the blur filter on and off, but I can actually change the intensity of the blur filter by turning the dial. Someone in the streamer bot community even has an example where he can turn the dial to select a viewer in his stream and then when he clicks into it, it bans that user. I realize some of this stuff is pretty advanced, but what is this video, like 15 minutes long? The only people that are still watching are nerds who live and breathe through this stuff anyway, so. Uh, it's probably interesting to you. But I'll leave it there for you guys to play around with. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, you want a medal or something? Go follow me on Twitch. I stream three nights a week. Uh, you can ask me whatever you want there. Uh, there's also the Patreon. Everyone who subs at the tier two or higher gets a whole bunch of widgets. Uh, and I'll have more widgets for you guys very soon. I haven't made one for a while. But uh, I promise something, there, there'll be something next week, okay? Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See you later. Thanks. Thanks for watching.